With doubtnet, get instant video solutions to all your maths, physics, chemistry and biology doubts. Just click the image of the question, crop the question and get instant video solution. Download doubtnet app today. In this question, we have been given a list and from this list, we have to classify the animals into cold-blooded and warm-blooded. Now, when we look at vertebrates, it is a highly diversified group under the animal kingdom and we have further divided it into many different classes and what we see is that not all of these vertebrates are capable of maintaining a constant body temperature or a constant osmotic concentration. So we can say that in some vertebrates their body temperature, the osmotic concentration of their body, all of this is dependent upon the conditions in their surroundings or the environmental conditions. When the temperature in the environment increases, their body temperature is also going to increase. Similarly, if ambient temperature is low, their body temperature is also going to drop. In other words, we can say that some vertebrates have the ability to maintain homeostasis that is constant internal environment and some of them are not able to do so. According to this criteria, we can divide them as follows. First of all, come our fishes. Now, fishes or the pices come under cold-blooded animals. They are not able to maintain their homeostasis and that is why we also call them poikilothermous animals. After the fishes, we are also going to place our amphibians and our reptiles under this group. Whereas the other two groups which are left under vertebrates, they have the ability to maintain homeostasis, constant internal conditions in their body. And these animals are called homeothermous. So the terms which have been given to us in the question, cold-blooded and warm-blooded, are used synonymously with these terms. Poikilothermous animals are also called cold-blooded and homeothermous animals can also be called warm-blooded. So our fishes, amphibians and reptiles do not have the ability to maintain constant internal environment whereas the birds and the mammals are equipped with such regulatory mechanisms that their body temperature does not change with the ambient conditions and in this list we can easily say Rohu is a kind of fish, Rohu is a bony fish, Scoliodon is nothing but the scientific name of shark or dogfish, so again it's a fish. After this flying lizard is going to come under reptiles, King Cobra is again a snake, so it is going to come under reptiles, Frog is an amphibian, Frog and Salamander both will be under amphibians and Crocodile is again a reptile. Apart from this, all the other three, ostrich, pigeon and bat. They are the warm-blooded animals where ostrich and pigeon both belong to the aves class. That is, they are birds and bat comes under mammals. So when we are classifying animals or particularly vertebrates on the basis of their ability to maintain homeostasis, their ability to maintain constant body temperature, despite the changing ambient conditions, we will say that fishes, amphibians and reptiles are cold-blooded or poikilothermous animals, whereas the birds and mammals are going to be homeothermous or as we call it, warm-blooded animals. And on the basis of that, we can classify the animals given in the list into cold blooded or warm blooded. For class 6 to 12, ITG and NEAT level. Trusted by more than 5 crore students. Download Doubt and App today.